Tonight uh, is Chamish Osor Bishvat, uh, which is mentioned, those of us that are learning the Gemara Rosh Hashanah now have just concluded uh, that uh, topic of Chamish Osor Bishvat. So it's the Rosh Hashanah Lilanot, it's the Rosh Hashanah for trees. So in halachic terms, uh, this meant that trees that uh, gave buds, that uh, showed fruit already uh, before Chamish Osir Bishvat. So when Chamish Osir Bishvat arrives, those trees are considered one year old already, even though it may have only been a month. And uh, that is for the Dean of Orla, the first three years of a fruit tree, the fruit is considered orla, is not used. And then the fourth year is neta revai, to bring it up to Yerushalayim. From the fifth year on, it's regular. So uh, shivos, I'm sorry, chamish uh, oser bishvat is like the cutoff day that determines, that determines the age as far as orla and other things are concerned. Also, uh, the question of uh, miser is involved, uh, etc. Now, uh, Orla is no egg even in Chutzlarts. But as a, a practical matter, almost none of the fruit that is sold commercially exists in the first few years of the tree. For instance, the orange tree it's like five years before you really get the uh, fruit that can be used. And there are other trees such as that. And there also is an idea of beetle uh, because of the fact that most of the uh, fruit that's sold is not uh, from uh, the first three years. So therefore, uh, they don't worry about it too much. The uh, interesting point, I think the point I'm going to concentrate on, is that uh, in the dead of a Russian winter, the Jews thought about uh, fruit in their soil. Chazal always uh, used many mechanisms to keep the idea of Eretz soil alive. Wherever Jews were, in whatever season of the year, and whatever problems they faced. So therefore, Chamish Osir Bishvat became a, a day of commemoration of Eretz Yisrael. That once we were in Eretz Yisrael, and then it had these halachic implications, and now, uh, even though we may be in exile, you know, we may have, uh, most Jews in Russia or in Lithuania and even in parts of Poland never saw an olive in their life. And the uh, other fruits that are mentioned in the Torah. But... Uh, the memory of it was kept alive. And by the memory of the fruit, <coughs> Eretz soil was also kept alive. Because that uh, revived uh, the longings of the, and also reinforced the fact that we were not home, that this is not our home. We may be living here temporarily, and temporarily it could be five, seven hundred years. But it's still only temporarily. That's not our home. So we have to remember Eretz Yisrael. So the, that's what the, uh, the Tehillim said, Bezachreinu es Zion. So there are a lot of things in the Jewish world, in the Jewish calendar, that are simply remembrances. And because of the remembrances, it was kept alive for centuries and millennia on end, which is 
really the remarkable thing about the whole story of the United States, for instance, is a nation of immigrants. But uh, those uh, who came from Ireland, uh, their grandchildren, uh, are not, they don't want to go back to Ireland. They have no feeling of Irishness within them. And that's true of everybody from every other country in the world, too. That once uh, you have left and you're living somewhere else and there are now generations somewhere else, so then the attachment to the original place is no longer there. But uh, Chazal wanted that that should not happen to us. And you see that uh, Nebuch, it happens to us uh, that there are many Jews that have no, uh, that no longer have any feeling or emotion or understanding of Eretz Yisrael. And uh, that, uh, that leads to not only complete assimilation, it leads to uh, even worse things and to anti-Jewish behavior, etc., etc. You know, there was a uh, Supreme Court justice in the United States by the name of Anthony Scalia, who was a uh, very brilliant, uh, passed away of a heart attack a few years ago. He was a very brilliant man. He was a uh, deeply religious Roman Catholic. His brother's a priest in the church. And uh, he uh, told, you know, there are three uh, Jewish justices, there were then three Jewish justices on the Supreme Court, and those Jews are, uh, let us say, uh, not too observant. And he told them he used to have lunch with Ruth Bader Ginsburg on a regular basis, even though they were on opposite sides of the judicial uh, uh, spectrum. He was very conservative, and she was extremely, really, extremely liberal. So he told her once, he said, you know, if the Jews in America observed the Torah, America would be a better place. Dugri, I told her the truth. Now, part, of, <clears throat> part of being a better Jew is remembering something like, now, uh, who remembers Chamisha Osir Bishvat? So in the exile, or when I grew up, I remember, so um, somehow there was a Jew in Chicago that imported uh, Boxer. You remember Boxer? <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, Haruvim. And, uh, and it was literally because it came from far away, it wasn't fresh, it was dried, you couldn't eat it. And I remember my father made me eat it every Chamisha Bishra. I had to eat the. So I asked him, you know, why, what? He says, no, that's, that's, that's Eretz soil. That's, you know, that, that grows in Eretz soil. And uh, that was meant to be the memory bank of the Jewish people. So uh, amongst Hasidim today, uh, even uh, it's amongst non-Hasidim, there are Jews that make a Seder on Chamish uh, Oser Bishvat. And they take uh, all of the fruits and they recite uh, appropriate Mamore uh, Chazal and poetry, etc., over each of the fruits and the order of the fruit, because that's mentioned in Aloche, which ones come first, in the, in the order of the Posik. All of it was meant simply to remind us where we came from where we belong. And this was one of the great memory aids. Chazal said, in most years, not in this year because it's a leap year. So we still have uh, a little of the winter ahead of us. But in most years, the Gemara says we go we go according to most years, 
So 1,219 years are not leap years. So the Gemara says that already the sap begins to grow in the tree to renew itself. And that uh, most of the rain has already fallen. And that therefore it's the harbinger of spring. So we're turning already, uh, the season is turning. Now if you're living in, uh, you know, in uh, St. Petersburg or Moscow, Or memo, you know, the, it, it's not, that's not what's happening. And nevertheless, for Chazal, that is what was happening. Because they wanted that the Jews should value what Eretz Israel is and to realize that they're going back and that somehow that is their home. In 1882, the Baron Rothschild French baron uh, founded the uh, Carmel Wine, the winery. You have to realize our soil was desolate then, completely desolate. And Mark Twain was here in 1898. He said that a crow would have to carry its own provisions to carry it across the country. And so he made this wine company and he did an, an Avera. That's an Avera Lishma. He uh, smuggled in uh, French vines into Eretz soil that they should plant it so they should have grapes. It's uh, an Isser de Raisa to take French vines out of France. But the whole world has done it. That's California, South Africa, everybody has done it. And he made this wine company. Uh, eventually, uh, after a few years, the uh, wine company produced a bottle of wine. First bottle of Carmel wine. He called, uh, he called his company in Israel Carmel Mizrahi. Not, not, not political. Mizrahi meant Carmel East because he owned a big wine company in France, which was Carmel West. So this was Carmel East. And he took the first bottle of wine and he sent it to Eastern Europe. He sent it to the Nitziv in Valozhin. To Rav Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, the Rosh Yeshiva Valozhin, the Rov in Valozhin. The Nitziv then was the president of the Chov of Eitzion that uh, supported Jewish settlement in Eretz Israel, to send people and to send money, etc. This was before Herzl, before Zionism, the precursor. So he sent the bottle of wine as a gift to the Nitziv. I don't know how he may have sent it FedEx. I don't know how he got it here, but the, the, uh, the nephew of the Nitziv uh, Baruch Halevi Epstein, who was the author of the Torah Tmima, so he wrote an autobiographical book, uh, four volumes, called Makor Boruch. In that uh, book, he records that the bottle of wine came to the Nitziv in Valozhin. He said, when the bottle of wine came, the Nitziv went into his bedroom and he changed his clothes to Big Day Shabbos to welcome the bottle of wine that was produced by Jews in Eretz Israel, and that all of the halochas, hatluyos b'oretz, were performed upon it. And uh, he said people lined up to look at the bottle of wine. A bottle of wine from Eretz Israel. Well, today we're a fine schmecker, so, you know, you need wine from Chile, or, or uh, you know, he's got a good wine from here, for there. But uh, we have to admit that the original Carmel wines were uh, not prize winners. <laughs> but they came from Eretz Israel. That made no difference. 
and that was the Hidur Mitzvah of observing it, so that we always had a memory of Eretz Yisrael. And it's the memory that has propelled us to where we are today. So Chamish Osar Bishvat has all of these halachas involved with it, but it also has an overriding idea with it, which uh, really has played a great effect upon the Jewish world into our time.